Welcome back. It's a call most parents don't want to get, and most teachers, let's be honest, would rather not make either. The teacher calls to let you know your child is having trouble finishing his work or maybe focusing on class. It gets difficult there, and most parents worry the problem could be ADHD, which is one of the most commonly diagnosed behavioral disorders for kids in the United States. So therapist Julie Hanks is here with a step-by-step -step plan to address your child's attention difficulty. I had to throw in difficult for the teachers there because my mom's an educator. I've mentioned that several times, and I know just how hard it is for the teachers to pick up that phone, almost equally as hard as it is for the parents to hear what's being said. Yeah, you never know what how the parent is going to respond mm -hmm. because it hits so close to home for parents to hear your kid is struggling. So there's a wide range of responses and emotional emotions that parents would have about getting that call that your kid is is, is struggling. Mm -hmm. And it's emotional. It's a slap in the face to a parent when all of a sudden you think your kid may be doing okay, and all right. of a sudden they go, oh wait, there might be a problem here. Right. So let's walk through the things that a parent should do. First off the bat, what do you have to do? Get the facts on the whole situation? Yeah, get the facts. It, put your emotions on hold and all those feelings of, oh my goodness, I failed as a parent, and get the facts. Um, details. What time of day is my child struggling? Is there a certain subject? Is it when they're sitting by a certain child? So you want to get the facts about and specifics about when uh, your child is struggling. Is it all through the day or is mm -hmm. it at certain times? And then also get the facts about what your child is experiencing. So asking good questions like, so what are you thinking about when you're supposed to be doing math? What's 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 going on for you? And that'll help you. Do you recommend approaching the child with, I got a call from Mrs. Smith or I got a call from Mr. Brown? Is that mm -hmm. something you, you say up front to the child? Well, I would. My yeah. parenting style is to be pretty open about that and just say, hey, let's talk about this. What's going on for you? So that's a great lead in. And you want to make sure that the child um, isn't scared. Like, oh, you're, they're not in trouble. It's just, oh, well, sure. there seems to be a struggle and we need to make some changes and figure out how to help you. Another thing you say to do is to examine the entire environment. So what are some things that would be in the environment that would affect a child's attention ability? Well, uh, peer relationships. So if there's conflict with friends, that may impact the child's ability to focus. Um, there's nutritional kinds of things that can impact. In fact, I, I knew a family where they shifted their sons, uh, took sugar out of his diet and some of the processed foods and noticed that really made a difference. So uh, nutritional aspects, are they getting enough sleep? What's going on in the family environment? Have there been stressors, a divorce or a separation, any kind of loss that might be uh, causing some preoccupation for mm -hmm. your child? This next tip I think was the golden aha for me. You say translate problems. So those things you're hearing that are so hard to hear and like Darren said can feel like a slap in the face, translate those problems into needs. That's huge. It is. It's really big because the problems can be overwhelming. We think, oh, my child is having these struggles. And again, it's easy to take it personally. But so take that struggle and turn it into the question of what does my child need? So if they're having difficulty completing schoolwork, what do they need? Do they need extra time to complete something? Do they need a tutor to help after school to catch up? Do they need, um, you know, if they have difficulty staying on task, do, do they need some behavioral plan in place to help them focus? So it's kind of taking that problem and turning it into a positive thing that you can do to help your child because be successful. Be the first question. They want to jump in and rescue. Yeah. And what can I do? And how can I save? And if you look at it as a need, I think mm -hmm. as nurturers, that's an easier problem and challenge to approach than just an issue. Right. I right. Love that. What is the child's? What is my child needing yeah. and how can I support that? And I think also when you get a call like this, you think it's all the child. The child's got to do something. But then this is actually something that a parent can do. It's almost empowering to the parent if you can identify something that you can give them to, to satisfy that need that'll help them out. Yeah. You say also then take it the next step farther instead of making the kid feel like this is a weakness for them, mm -hmm. but to focus on the child's strengths right. or this. So often kids who actually have the diagnosis of ADHD have amazing other strengths, a lot of energy, creativity, flexibility in thinking. So every child has different strengths and you can use their strengths to overcome whatever challenges they're having. And I think it's really important, especially for the child's self-esteem, to, to um, build and use their strengths.
There are so many adults that uh, contribute and impact a child's life. You know, they say it takes a village, really. Who should you involve in this process as you're reevaluating strengths and reevaluating needs? Obviously, the teacher, the student, and the parent. Are mm -hmm. there other individuals that should be included in this plan or this goal? Yes. And depending on what works and what doesn't, I, mean, it's, I think it's best to start with the parent and the teacher coming up with a plan, see how that works. Then there's school counselors that can be a great resource, um, pediatrician. So teachers can't diagnose. ADHD but but a medical or a mental health professional can and so if if your child is continuing to struggle that's when you get an evaluation talk to the pediatrician uh, a mental health provider like me can diagnose it as a disorder not just distractibility or difficulty concentrating mm -hmm. so you can have uh, a really great support team but our, it's important for the parent to take the lead because no one loves your child like you do no one you know it's your job to take the lead and and teachers can be supportive but they you know they're nurturers of what you know yeah, 30 yeah. plus kids <laughs> and so parents take the lead and and getting to the you know to solve that that mm -hmm. issue for your child that's your responsibility to advocate I know our oldest child Parker he actually came home from high school he says, I'm sure I got ADHD I know I've got it I can't concentrate He's in like class self diagnosing right? yeah he did <laughs> and so we are we, you qualified <laughs> to do that That's what asking. <laughs> but we actually took him to the doctor and the doctor uh -huh. gave him like a survey to fill out uh -huh. and said you know fill us and, and by the end he realized no, I'm just bored in some of my classes is what, is what it all it is, you know? With, with my teenagers, it's like, so what time did you get to sleep last night? <laughs> Maybe it's because, because you were texting, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Where, where would a parent look and find some great resources if they were lo trying to look at this, trying to figure out if this is something you need to learn, learn more about? What are some resources? Well, I actually posted some links on the web article uh, where, where parents can, can get additional information and they link to other books and, and those kind of things. But if you just Google and search for uh, you know ADD or attention problems um, one of, a good one is the National Institute of Mental Health they have some up-to-date statistics and kind of what those uh, what the diagnosis entails and then another great one is born to explore dot org and it's really great about focusing on what the child's strengths are yeah yeah so those are some really good resources when well, ADD and ADHD is such a point of panic for parents when they hear those words or those terms and rightfully so but a friend of mine her her little boy was just diagnosed and she's been thrilled with, with the progress they've been able to make mm -hmm. once that diagnosis was on the table and it was out there to talk about and to address so ending on that positive point I think that there is help available yeah and when you get a an accurate diagnosis there is such a sense of relief yeah so if your child actually does have this disorder and not just kind of some some minor difficulties it's a relief to know oh that's, that's what's what going on now we and know. now we can do something yeah. about it yeah Good awesome ideas. advice Julie thank, thank you, you. Thanks. we'll be back with more on studio 5 or so we also mentioned we've got some additional resources on our website as well you can find that there at studio5.ksl.com now we'll be back with more on studio 5 <laughs>